It was time of year Farmer Bailey liked best. When summer turned to fall, he whistled as he drove along. A cold breeze blew across his face through the truck's open window. Then it happened. There was a loud thump. Mr. Bailey jammed on his brakes. Oh no, he thought. I've had a deer. There wasn't a deer that the farmer found lying in the road. It was a man. Mr. Bailey knelt down beside the still figure, fearing the worst. Suddenly, the man opened his eyes. He looked up with terror and jumped to his feet. He tried to run off, lost his balance and fell down. He got up again, but this time the farmer took his arm and helped him into the truck. Mr. Bailey drove home. He helped the stranger inside where Mrs. Bailey made him comfortable on a parlor sofa. Katie, their daughter, peeped into the room. The man on the sofa was dressed in odd, rough leather clothing. She heard her father whisper, must be some kind of hermit, the sort of fellow who lives alone in the woods. The stranger didn't seem to understand the questions Mr. Bailey asked him. I don't think, whispered Mrs. Bailey, he knows how to talk. Mr. Bailey called the doctor, who came and listened in the stranger's heart, felt his bones, looked in his eyes, took his temperature. He decided the man has lost his memory. There was a bump on the back of his head. In a few days, the doctor said, he should remember who he is and where he's from. Mrs. Bailey stopped the doctor as he left the house. He'd forgotten his thermometer. Oh, she can throw that out, he answered. It's broken. The mercury at the stuck at the bottom. Mr. Bailey went to the stranger some clean clothes. His fellows seemed confused about buttonholes and buttons. In the evening, he joined the Baileys for dinner. The steam that rose from the hot food fascinated him. He watched Katie take a spoonful of soup and blow gently across it. Then he did exactly the same. Mrs. Bailey shivered. Ugh, she said. There's a draft in here tonight. The next morning, Katie watched the stranger from, her, from the bedroom window. He walked across the yard toward two rabbits. Instead of running in the, direct, in, in the woods, the rabbits took a hop in his direction. He picked one of them up and stroked his ears and then set it down. The rabbits hopped away and then stopped and looked back as if they were expecting the stranger to follow. When Katie's father went into the fields that day, the stranger shyly tagged along. Mr. Billy gave him a pitchfork and with a little practice, he learned to use it well. They worked hard. Occasionally Mr. Bailey would set to stop and rest, but the stranger never tired. He didn't even sweat. That evening, Katie sat with the stranger, watching the setting sun. High above them, a flock of geese in perfect V formation flew south on the trip that they made every fall. The stranger could not take his eyes off the birds. He stared at them like a man who had been hypnotized. Two weeks passed and the stranger still could not remember who he was. But the Baileys didn't mind. They liked having the stranger around. He had become one of the failing. Day by day he had grown less timid. He seemed so happy to be around us, Mr. Bailey said to his wife. It's hard to believe he's a hermit. Another week passed. Farmer Bailey could not help noticing how peculiar the weather, weather had been. Not long ago it seemed that autumn was just around the corner. But now it still felt like summer as if the seasons couldn't change. The, wet, the warm days made the pumpkins grow larger than ever. The leaves on the trees were green as, as they'd been three weeks before. One day, the stranger climbed the highest hill on the Bailey farm. 
He looked to the north and saw a puzzle in sight. The trees in the distance were bright red and orange. But the trees to the south, like those around the baileys, were nothing but shades of green. They seemed so dab and ugly though, strange. It would be much better, he thought, if all the trees could be red and orange. The stranger's feelings grew stronger the next day. He couldn't look at the tree's green leaves without sensing that something was terribly wrong. The more he thought about it, the more upset he became, until he finally, he could think of nothing else. He ran to a tree and pulled off a leaf. He held it in a trembling hand and, without thinking, blew on it with all his might. At dinner that evening, the stranger appeared, dressed in his old leather clothes. By the tears in his eyes, the bales could tell that their friend had decided to leave. He helped him all at once, and then dashed out the door. The bailiffs hurried outside to wave goodbye, but the stranger had disappeared. The air grew, had turned cold, and the leaves in the trees were no longer green. Every autumn since the stranger's visit, the same thing happens at the Bailey Farm. The trees that surround it stay green, green for a week, and after the trees. To the north have turned. Then at, overnight they changed their color to the brightest of any tree around and etched on the, and frost in the farmhouse windows are words that say simply, see you next fall.